when you get to roll call, maybe we can do um, introductions sure. for the roll call section. Okay, perfect. Well, good evening, everyone. Do we have a motion to call the, me the meeting to order? So move. Started? All right, so we have, is Hector here yet? No. Oh, there he is. He's coming in. Get ready to let him in. Why don't we wait just hey, one Bob. second? Did we finally get in yet? Okay. There He's we coming. Go. There he goes. All right. So, all right. So I am Donna Maitland Ward. I am a resident, obviously, here at Bloomfield and um, the one of the co chairs for this um, committee, Hector Colon. Hector, you want to introduce yourself? No, he's, he's still connecting. No, okay. Maybe we can just let everyone know who's on our meeting today. So they're probably like, why are we introducing ourselves? <laughs> All right, so we have our, um, we are excited to have our new town manager, Stanley Hawthorne here joining us today for our meeting. Mr. Hawthorne, would you like to take a moment while we're waiting to introduce ourselves for you to introduce yourself first? We can start with that. Yeah, and I'm very excited to be here. Um, hopefully more excited than you are to have me. <laughs> so I, um, I I started one week ago today um, as new town manager, but the process had been quite long the last last several months. So I've done a lot of homework and I actually had my first official tour this afternoon of the community, but I had um, previously made my made my way around. But I hail from uh, Florida, which is my native state. And I've been a manager there in numerous uh, communities. Uh, there was something about Bloomfield that caught my attention when the advertisement went out and that interest only grew as the process went along. Um, but it doesn't compare to the, um, the, the, the real enthusiasm that I've gained becoming a part of the community. So I have a lot of learning to do. And then uh, working with the staff of Bloomfield, uh, we've got a lot of planning and doing to continue the great work that, um, that has already been done. And I'm just very excited about the work that you all are doing here. <clears throat> and just uh, a little personal information uh, that I'm sure you'll be able to relate to. I've been a foster care parent for many, many years. And mm -hmm. I'm not active any longer, but I still have my last foster child who, um, who moved here with me. Uh, he's college age at this, at this point. Uh, so these are programs that, um, that really touch me. That's awesome. That is awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Hector, have you connected? Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my apologies for the, the doing late folks. I was picking up my son from high school. So um, my name is Hector Cologne. I am co-chair along with Donna of the council. Um, I have been uh, a resident of Bloomfield pretty much most of my life, a little bit of time uh, in Hartford as well as with the military, but ended up back here, go figure. Um, and I've been here pretty much, again, pretty much all my life. I have three kids that are um, either have gone through the, the public school system here, um, Two, which and I, I'll be proud to say that are Ivy League students. Um, and then one that is a senior this year and is uh, looking around. He hasn't made his choice yet, but, uh, you know, proud of him regardless of where he ends up. Great. All right. Thank you, Hector. Who, uh, Angelica, do you? Sure, I can start. Uh, my name is Angelica Thompson. I'm the youth service coordinator. I have been in this role for two years now. Um, prior to that, I've done a lot of youth services programs in the various different cities and towns. I am a Bloomfield, um, was a former Bloomfield resident, alumni of the Bloomfield Public High School, and now I'm back here working in our hometown, and it's been exciting. Two years, we've been developing a lot of programs to be continuing to change stuff and adapt based on the needs of, the, of our community, and I look forward to what this year will bring as well. Great. Thank you. So um, folks can just jump in based on where you are. Um, Robert, I'll go to you next because that's you're next on my screen. 
I'm Robert Wilkins, um, community service officer, town of Bloomfield. Been with the town for nine and a half years, community service for the last six years. And, you know, really enjoy any youth programs or any community related programs. You guys can jump in. Uh, Tiffany, you're next up on my screen, so I'll go to you next. Hi, I'm Tiffany Wright. I'm the Assistant Youth Services Coordinator as well as the JRB Case Manager. Um, I am a Bloomfield resident as well. Um, I enjoy this job. I started about three years ago as a foster care support network case manager. Um, I now oversee that temporarily also. And welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see who's next. Um, Don? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Don Crocker. I'm with the Village for Families and Children. I run the Father Engagement Services um, for the Village. I'm also a 25 year resident of Bloomfield, and I'm on the Juvenile Review Board. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Kushima, you're next. Hello, I am Keishima Jones. I am the District Coordinator of Extended Learning and Family and Community Engagement. I finally got it right, guys. It's a long name. It's a long title. <laughs> I have been with the district for eight months. Um, I am a Bloomfield resident. I have two children that attend Bloomfield High School. Um, I uh, My background comes from nonprofit, uh, government, uh, but they, it's all been with youth and families and um, community work. That's a little bit about me. All right. Great. Perfect. Let's see. All right. I'm not the greatest with Zoom. I do teams at work, so You're I'm here fine. trying to get through. We have a, uh, Davar, is, is that your name, Davar? Uh, yes. Why don't you I'm Davar. Um, I'm Davar Pinnock. Um, I was in the youth service for two years. Uh, no, I'm a college freshman at UConn. Yay. Very good. We're happy to have you here tonight. Thank you. Shonda, I think I saw you jump on as well. Good evening, all. Welcome, Mr. Hawthorne. I'm Shanda George. I'm with the Family Resource Center located at Lowell Elementary School, where we work with the families of children um, prenatal, parents prenatal, children up to five years old, and we uh, have a diaper bank located in Laurel Elementary School, along with a uniform closet. And I also work for the Bloomfield Leisure Services. Um, and again, welcome to Bloomfield, Mr. Hawthorne. Thank you so much. Great, so we are all set. Did I miss anybody? No, you got everyone. Well, you know who I am, so I don't have to introduce yes. myself. <laughs> Thank you, Camilla. All right, so we are at the stage now where we will be reviewing and looking at the minutes from um, June, our last meeting, which was months ago. Uh, so hopefully uh, they were in the email that Angelica sent out. Hopefully everyone had the opportunity to review the minutes. Um, they're up on the screen now. You'll see Angelica has them up now. So. Angelica, if you could scroll up just a little bit, that would give folks to, who did not get a chance to, to peruse them um, pretty quickly so that we can then see if there's any revisions necessary. And if not, we can have, when you're ready, I can have a motion to either revise them and or approve the, min or approve the minutes. That would be helpful. If all, all, everyone is all set, I make a motion that we approve the minutes as they are written. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Perfect. So it's been quite a few months since we met, a few months. Hopefully everybody had a great summer. Um, at least it was nice to be able to get out and get some fresh air and weather wasn't too, too bad. So we made it through the summer. 
it's uh, why don't we take a minute now next to look at our fall meeting schedule. Um, thank you, Angelica, for getting the agenda up. So this is our first meeting to, to kick off the fall. And then, Angelica, did you send out the schedule? I didn't. So the uh, fall meeting schedule we had, I know we had a brief meeting about keeping our meetings yeah. for once a month. We just wanted to make right. sure we had everybody um, that was can be present to just agree upon continuing to meet once a month. I know we have put it out there if we were going to continue to meet <laughs> once a month or make it um, um bi-monthly, but it sounds like but from our last conversation, we do so many things that is in best interest to have our meetings continue to meet monthly for um, our youth adult council meetings. I agree. It should definitely be once a month. There's just way too much that you guys feel that, that we need to review. I can just, pull up the old one that I have that has the rest of this fiscal year, um, the rest of this um, 2021 calendar. I can pull that one up so everyone can see the dates that we have already set for the end of this year that would be great well that's what yeah we can pull it up but they've already been approved i guess i'm just you know maybe in the next couple months uh, we should put up the the calendar for um the upcoming year the 2022 year we usually approve that in november or december um because we'll need to Correct. submit to the town clerk's office um before january so just in case, does anyone else have any thoughts around uh, revising our schedule from monthly to any other um, thoughts around what it should look like by monthly? We just, we, we didn't have a lot of people, I think, for June. And so I think that's why we tabled it till now, but wanted to hear from the rest of you around, should we proceed with continuing with the monthly meetings? And I, I would, go ahead. I'll be coughing, so I'm going to try to mute myself as much as I can. I, I agree with Hector, particularly we've still got so much change going on given COVID and the Delta and everything else that in, in addition to what you guys do. So I think at least continuing to meet monthly for the foreseeable future makes sense. I agree. I agree, that, that works, yep. Well, I also agree. All right, it sounds like we're in agreement to maintain that. I don't believe we needed to really put it to an official vote. We would just, we're bringing it up as a part of discussion, right, Angelica? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's no change, so we'll continue right. doing what we've been doing. Perfect. All right, so on to new business. Okay. So I'm gonna pull up our monthly report from August. So that way we can see some of the things that we finished up for the tail end of the summertime. I've had the same call for over a month now, so just you know, and it's not COVID. I've been tested. I've been tested multiple times. Yeah, so, so don't say yeah. I know it's driving me crazy. Sad when everything is COVID. You know, you're so afraid of simple cough oh or God. allergies. You know, I've gotten so many. I've gotten so many dirty looks. It's killing me. Oh, why is he out here? <laughs> yeah, that's the world we're in now. Okay, apparently Angelica has gotten up from the nap. I had to turn my lights back on. They go off. Angelica the swallowed a watermelon, so you'll have to excuse her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have our youth services updates in terms of what we have for our programs that were for the month of August. Let's see. I'm just going to go through and um, just give a little bit of elaboration on the key points for some of our main programs for this summer. We mostly ran our fun Fridays that we had for the community and we had our continuous foster care support network program activities for the month. And we also had our major program, the summer youth employment program. So for our summer youth employment program, we hire on students ages 14 through 17. There's two different tiers that we have. We have our 14 and 15 year olds do a job readiness learning program where they learn all the skills in terms of how to apply for a job, resume, career building, interviewing skills, and they are held for 120 hours if you did that in person. And then we had our tier three. Those students 
were actually placed at different work sites within the town. We had about eight or nine work sites that we had this, this year, and we had 13 students that were placed. And with both of these groups, we do have GCS students as well. So for the summertime, we had a very successful program this summer. Our maximum number of kids that we have were 27 kids that we had for both programs. And we had for each week, each week we had all of our students participate um, for all their hours. If they didn't show up, we had some hours they had to make up. We had a makeup week of August 16th through August 20th. We had a few students make up their hours. This year we did something a little bit different. We did have an end of the year summer awards program banquet. So we acknowledged the kids in terms of different awards. Everyone got a participation award, but we actually had the work site supervisors highlight three students in different categories for um, employee, employee, of the, employee of the summer. And then we had most improved, um, best team leader. And we had one other category I just can't think offhand, but they were had to be nominated to win those awards. And it really gave the students a sense of why they're doing the program. We had a total of 52 individuals present and we had um, five staff that we had with that and we had worksite supervisors and we had some guests as well that attended. So um, we had 20 parents. So that was a good success to have the parents in the meeting as well. A lot of times getting that parents to come in is usually a struggle, but out of our 24 students that showed up, we had 20 parents and we had um, a good turnout. Like everyone enjoyed it. We had a very nice rundown of our program agenda. Some people stayed a little bit longer even after the event was done, but it was a good turnout. That's something that we also wanna keep including within the program. If we um, wanna to continue to do the Summer Youth Employment Program, in addition to this, before the program started, we did something new. We had a parent orientation for both groups. And both groups had either one or two parents show up to hear the orientation. And I think that helps buy into the importance of why we're doing the program, the importance of consistency, follow through, showing up on time. That way they can successfully complete the program. For Angelica, the can you share? Oh, sorry, go ahead. For the total program, um, all of our students, for the most part, did all of their 120 hours. We just had one student that didn't complete the whole 120. She had 115.5. But to have that success rate out of 27 students in the midst of a pandemic and we we're meeting in person, I feel like that's fantastic. And this is also our second year that we are running the Summer Youth Employment Program. Can you share the worksite placements? for this yeah. year, for this summer? We had the finance department, we had youth services, leisure services, Fidelco, um, it was their first year with us and that went great. Um, senior center. And Bloomfield Volunteer Ambulance. Ambulance. Yes, Bloomfield Volunteer Ambulance. And the Blue Hills Fire Department. Yep, and then we have both libraries, Prowser and Wintonberry. Mm -hmm. I just want to say for the record, um, the two that we had at Leisure Services, even when they um, their paid services were done, they still came back to volunteer. They were such awesome uh, such an awesome young man and a young woman that they really did a great job. And the young lady that we had here at the Family Resource Center, she was so good that we're trying to, as soon as our um, grant comes in, we're going to hire her to do our media specialist. So we're excited that, you know, that 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 program took off like it did and that we got such quality young men and women from the Bloomfield Public Schools to do such a great job for us here and the Bloomfield Public School. So thank you guys for having these young people. They did an awesome job this summer. Yeah, oh yeah, Family Resource Center and Bloomfield Public Schools were two other placements. Yeah. Okay, let me just share. Okay. 
and I've got everybody on here. I have senior services, leisure services, social and youth. We had um, Prosper Public Library, had the Wittenberry branch as well. They both took one student. Bloomfield Volunteer Ambulance, we had the Finance Department. This was their first year taking one student. And the um, Bloomfield Volunteer Ambulance, this was their first year taking one student with us as well. Blue Hills Fire Department was a new work site placement. They did take one student as well. We had Family Resource Center. This was their first year taking a student with us. And Fidelco, this was a non-town department. They took one student and they said, if we do it next year, they would take two as well. And Bloomfield High School, this was our first year that we had a placement with them. We had someone at their front office. They took a student and for the most part, I got a lot of great feedback from all of the work sites that all of the students were, you know, excellent. They showed up on time, they communicated. And a lot of these students, they did our tier two program last year and they kind of graduated to be old enough to do the work site placement. So they learned a lot of those foundational skills with us last year and those skills showed and panned out with them when they were at their placements for, for this, this summer youth deployment program as well. So we are. Angelica, looking, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Please. So we are looking to expand um, for next year a few more non-town departments to get um, more different fields of work that the students can have that experience with with as well, and to gain more of that community partnership as well, so they can see so different towns, different departments. And agencies in Bloomfield can see these are our youth and they're giving back to volunteer and their services and we have their students learn about more resources that they typically don't have access to to gain employment with. And we do try to match a lot of the students with their career interests. So a lot of those students were interested in either early childhood or a medical profession. So we try to closely match students as close as possible to their career interests to a career as well. Excellent. Just a point of clarification, and then, of course, I can't stay silent. I have a couple comments and questions, if you don't mind. So, clarification, open to all Bloomfield residents, right? They don't necessarily have to be a student in Bloomfield, correct? Correct, yes. Yep. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, on the listing of um, agencies or, or departments that we worked with, I saw food share was on there, but I didn't see a number next to it. Was there any particular reason why? No, we didn't get them to... Um get on board with us. It was just in terms of timing. We had to have the work site agreements back by a certain date to start the program. And um, but that is another site that we we'll potentially explore earlier to have them on for for the next year. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, it, I don't think this is anything new, right? This is your baby. This is something that you came in with and that you um, worked with your team to implement. So kudos because this is something that's been long overdue nothing different than any other message we've given to you before. I guess my question is, right, the challenge, and I, I've said this to you directly, the challenge is to grow it every year. And I know you've already kind of elaborated on that a little, right, where we're going to maybe maybe one or two extra people next year, right, extra participants in it. So continue that growth on it. I think it is something that is valuable to the youth in this town. Um, and the next piece of that is, we briefly discussed on an offline discussion um, some of the issues we've had with capital workforce uh, and some of the um, growing pains, I guess, with trying to implement the program. Have we kind of discussed or is this in discussion for possibly taking the program over using some of the grant money uh, provided within to the town with the American, uh, God, I'm going to kill the name. I guess American, the American Recovery Act. American exactly. Recovery Act, yeah. So, so Camilla, you were part of that discussion, right? I mean, have we thought about that? Have we approached anybody about that? Um, I'll just mm -hmm. kind of stop there. It's still in its infancy stages. Um, and um, I, I believe uh, the finance director um, did a presentation uh, last month sometime. Um, and I can send out the I think I send out an invite to all of you um, just to uh, have an opportunity to see the pre uh, presentation and to participate, but it is on uh, YouTube and you can watch it and I can send out that link, um, but it's still in its infancy stages. And once we know more about how it will move forward, um, 
we'll definitely make sure that you are involved in the process. Um, Excellent. Thank you. I'm not trying to monopolize the money. I realize there's a lot of people who want a piece of that and uh, deservedly so. Uh, but it sounds like over the years, we've kind of in the two years that we've worked with capital workforce, there has been some back and forth that has made it a little bit cumbersome process for us, where it seems like we could do something that, that works a little bit easier. Well, a lot easier. Let's, let's not be um, let's not miss words there. Um, to make it a lot easier to implement the program on a regular basis. Agreed. Yeah, so hopefully we'll see how our funding looks for that, because then that way we can kind of add some elements that we want to do for our end for some youth employment. Um, when we're working with, um, that was a federal grant through capital workforce. There's a lot of restriction guidelines for things that we have to do in addition to running the program. There's a lot of program requirements and fulfillment of slots and a lot of different things. Challenging. That we have, um, mm -hmm. To comply to. So we've been, we've been working it out and going through the motions. Um, they've had a lot of different um, staff throughout this year and last year as well. So their management changes, because their management has changed. So we just yeah. kind of staff with who we have as a contact person. But we'll talk, we'll be able to talk more about it once we know um, how the town will move forward with um, the funding. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I just add something? Yes, absolutely. I really, I'm, I'm really proud of what you all have accomplished uh, with this past season. And I'm glad to hear that this is something that you're going to be pushing forward uh, at an even greater accelerated level. I think back to when I was in school, particularly high school, and I knew that I wanted a career in and government, but I never thought about local government simply because I'd never been exposed to it. It was only when I was in undergrad school that a professor recommended that I consider local government as a career. And he encouraged me to uh, apply for the University of Virginia, uh, the grad school, uh, but also a fellowship program that the city of Charlottesville, Virginia offered. And I applied and I was accepted. And so my exposure to local government told me that it was where I wanted to spend my, my career. And there is a mutually beneficial interest that comes from these types of programs. And I believe in them at the high school, college and graduate school level uh, because it's not only exposing uh, young people and students the local government uh, with all of its diversity of, of services. But it also, if you, if you do it right, uh, the agencies that participate, they should be giving meaningful jobs to uh, students and others who participate in the program. And the more education that one has uh, in talking about college and, and graduate school students, you know, those are really getting close to entry level type positions uh, that allows uh, a governmental organization to expand its resources to do some things that they wouldn't necessarily be doing. Um, so I have nothing official to say, but I do want to let you know that I'm proud of what you've done. And these are the types of programs that I look to support absolutely going forward. Thank you. And just so you awesome. know, um, Stanley, for a little bit of history, last year for some youth deployment, we did have one student that was placed at the town manager's office for um, a work site for the summer youth employment program. Um, and also we did have someone for HR lined up, but we just wasn't able to get them on board for that. So there are definitely some departments that express interest. I just wasn't able to do it this year for the summer youth deployment program. But as you mentioned, this is something that, you know, having that exposure for the students that they typically won't have will only enhance the town in terms of getting just new ideas and getting people to really understand about 
government and what they have and what is offered in their town in terms of employment as well. Absolutely. Angelica, do um, one of my concerns is we have a lot of students everywhere who are not, they're not academic stars, but they have many other skills. Um, and are there opportunities for, for students like that to find something that has, it gives them a practical exposure to a trade or something that would <laughs> help them move forward? So we're trying to expand upon looking at, um, I want to do like a community, um, you know, search of the businesses to find different, different trades that wouldn't be your typical trajectory of a college education. So then that way we can hit those students that are our college bound ones to get them opportunities of different job placements that would take like just a high school diploma or a trade so that way they have some type of work lined up. Another goal of this program too is that we have to get a record of if the student will be going to school. So if they're not in school, we try to place them in two different programs. Um, luckily, all of the students that we have participated with us for this year are going to continue on with school. Or they are actually graduated and were already enrolled into university. But if we catch those red flags of students who are not enrolling in school or they graduated with no plan, we try to guide them and still work with them beyond the program to make sure they are getting some type of education and trades to, to um, have meaningful, meaningful work. And also this year we had 140 students apply with only 27 slots. So it was very difficult to weed out 140 students and only select 27. Um, that's the hardest part, but that shows the need of the community in terms of these youth need, need employment and to have 140 students. I feel like next year we're gonna get even more than that for, um, for applications when they come out. Oh, yeah. Thank you. L uh, last year, um, I remember An Angelica sharing with me um, during the pandemic that there were a couple of students where the summer youth employment program, they, they were the only ones in the household working because parents were either laid off or what have you because they weren't able to, to work because of COVID. So we realized the importance of our youth working and, and building skill sets. And for some households, it's a financial lifeline. Um, so that is very real and, and very important for us to remember too, as we're doing this work. Yeah, that's perfectly in alignment where this, this committee has talked about life skills for our adolescents really. Mm -hmm or that as a town, we're really being able to offer that. So when I hear you say 140 some odd adult, you know, young adults applied for this, all I could think about, it's great for the 27, but what else can we do for those that weren't um, able to get into the program? And so we really have to start looking at, at broadening our net and making more things available. Um, hopefully we'll have some school reps back present with us, some of the high school, um, representatives here with this committee so that we can continue to talk about how we can partner with them around um, assisting with life skills. You know, when we think about it, it's, it's going to be key for our young adults to step out of high school and do something. Angelica, when you think about the trades, I know there's some elect electricians we see around town that live in town that have their vans parked in. You think about plumbing. Those are great fields um, for po you know, folks to go into. Um, that allow them the opportunity to work independently and mm -hmm. make a very a high quality living. So I think it's real important for us to uh, add those. It's, that's exciting to hear you saying that you want to do that as well. So let us know how we can help. Okay, perfect. Does anybody have any other further questions in terms of some of these employment programs? I do have, I don't know if Donna, do you want me to just go into our fall programs that we yeah. have scheduled to, to start for this fall? So our programs are scheduled to start the week of September, the third week of September. Let me see if I can pull up the flyer that has a brief description of our programs that we will be offering this fall. We will be offering small in-person groups because we feel that's real important. Uh, we're going to keep following the social distance guidelines and stay open in person as long as we can um, based on current COVID um, 
regulations and what's happening with um, with the virus. So this is just a flyer that we have going out for our fall, fall program. So this year we're gonna have our young mentorship program, which is our tribe group. It's gonna be with grades eight through 12, focused on key elements of becoming a health mature and knowledgeable young man. That is gonna be facilitated by one of our um, program coordinators and co-facilitated by our youth and family worker. This has been the staple group for youth services. We have our Bloomfield Police Department Youth. That is with our police department and our youth grades seven through 12, giving students the opportunity to partner with members of the Bloomfield Police Department. That's scheduled to start in October. Project 330 is our leadership group that serves grades eight through 12. Leaders, the leadership group that promotes advocacy, community organizing skills, financial literacy that empowers youth. We have our life skills, we're gonna continue that. And this is one of our new programs that we have started with um, youth services. That is for grades seven through 10 that we're offering. We're gonna have them learn essential skills to become independent young adults. This includes cooking, budgeting, saving, and everyday skills. This is gonna start the 23rd of September. And then we have our Sunbeams, which is grades six through 11, an apartment group focused on individuality, leadership, and team building. This is with our um, girls group, girl, like a girls leadership group. So these are our main programs that we want to start. We also have our foster care support network, which is our year round program. So we are actively recruiting new, new participants for that program. That program runs year round for foster care. Which I'm not missing anybody else. We do plan on offering a younger Sunbeams group for the younger girls for the spring. Um, Tiffany facilitates this group and she noticed that a lot of parents wanted something for um, youth younger than grade six. So we're working on, I want to call it the junior Sunbeams. It's going to be officially given a, a different name, but we do plan on offering that for the spring as well. But this is our foundational programs that we'll start. In addition to our fall programs, we, we're going to have like our usual um, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but I like trunk or treat. We'll have some community type events that we plan on partnering with leisure services to get our students more volunteer opportunities and exposure to the community as well. And all of these groups will be in person. I can only say, oh my goodness. <laughs> good stuff. That's good stuff. Oh yeah, we have good stuff. Yeah, we always say we're not a huge department, but we try to do as many meaningful programs. One of my goals that I have focused for the department is providing enrichment programs where students are taking something away. We do we do trips, we do fun stuff in between, but my mission for the department is that students take away something. I'm always a huge, huge fanatic about financial literacy, so I try to incorporate finance, uh, finance within all of our programs where they learn basic money skills. That's why you see a lot of stuff on there about budgeting and savings and financial literacy with all of our departments. Even when they do their different um, community activities, they learn how to make the budget, how to go through from the beginning to the end of their project. That way they just learn those foundational skills. And uh, one highlight I did forget to mention when we had our um, um, end of the year celebration for the summer's appointment, we did have a young lady State that she opened up a Roth IRA account and she started her retirement savings and she understands the interest of early come or saving early. She understands the saving early would get her to wherever she needs to be. So it's just those little seeds that you plant within students that make me say this is why I do what I do despite everything else to have these students understand this is their foundation starting early and providing them information that they typically what may not have been exposed to so they can have a great start. Yes. Angelica, are we still doing the program with the grandparents? Mm. Yes, so intergenerational, we are, I'm trying to figure out, I did have to have a meeting with um, 
Yvette for Senior Services to see how she's running some of her programs, to see if I can get a post of if there's some seniors that's interested in coming in person to a, a really small group. So we do plan on having some um, kind of like give back activities that we did last year, putting together care kits, the things that we could deliver to our seniors that are inbound, that aren't able to um, participate in person. But once I learn more about if I can get at least a handful of, um, we call our seniors grandpas. So if we can get some grandpas to participate, we can do some small stuff in person. I spoke briefly with Yvette, she says, you know, try to do as much as we can outdoors until the weather starts to get cool. So I'm trying to figure out um, ways we can get a few meetings in for in person and then do um, projects that we just give back to them to let them know that we're thinking about them. We're trying to stay connected with them to the youth in a different capacity. I know last year we did a few um, um, care kits to the seniors. We did holiday wreaths. We did um, some other um, um, floor arrangements for the Valentine's Day, and that was a huge success. Senior Services helped out with us. They delivered all the stuff to the residents in Bloomfield. So we're just trying to think of creative ways to keep the youth connected and keep the grandpas connected with our youth as well. And if there's any suggestions, we're open to the, you know, someone else may have a different idea of how we can partner with our, our seniors. Great. Are we at the point where we're talking about the boo bash? Yes. Let me pull back up the agenda. Okay. Okay. So for the agenda for every year we do a community community holiday event. So we can't call it Halloween, so we do our trunk or treat. Last year we had a drive-through trunk or treat where we had a route here at 330 Park Avenue and we had different town departments set up little tables with stations that were decorated with different things. We had the fire um, department and we had the Boomba Volunteer Ambulance. They had their vehicles decorated as well and um, we had the community residents drive through. We put stuff into their trunks as they came through. So we are in the planning phase for our trunk or treat. We're going to start our meetings this um, tomorrow, actually, for trunk or treat in terms of what we want that to look like. I did have a brief meeting with Lee, Melissa from Leisure Services. We were thinking about the idea of um, having the drive-in, like movie, drive-in movie, in addition to our like giving out treats and stuff. So one of the things I know it's early, but thinking about how we want to spend youth adult council funds, I'm trying to um, get a plan for Camilla and Tiffany before I'm out on leave in terms of how we're going to spend funds, what we want to focus our funds on for um, youth adult council for this event for Trunk or Treat. I know last year we ended up getting, I think we did last year, some stuff for, let me say treats, the stuff to give out, the candies. And I have to look back at my notes to see in the budget if we put any funds towards um, drug pre prevention stuff, like handing out um, information. Yeah, I think the budget last year was $300, maybe. Um, that sounding familiar. Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought. Are you looking for this council to also participate in addition yes. to, okay. Yes, yep, so we'll, we'd love to have you guys as a vendor again for um, for participation. Okay. Trying Victor, to are we bringing, doing a, dressing up a car again and getting you all dialed up in the costumes? Yeah, there'll be costumes and dressing up cars. We just have to figure out the additional details of the event. So by our next meeting, we'll have more information for you. Oh, yeah, last, um, just so you know, to Stanley, last year we had 120 participants that were signed up for, for the trunk or treat to come out. And it's all ages from pre-K all the way through grade, I have the flat right here, through grade eight. So a child as young as one through grade eight can participate as long as they have their adult household member. 
So it's fun. We had a lot of um, people from the community. They decorated their car as well as they drove through to collect their um, their treat items from from all the vendor tables. That's wonderful. Yeah, we have it decorated really nice here at 330 Park Avenue for the route that we had around the building. So. Yeah, I just want to go on record as saying I'm going to be participating this year. Donna, it would be wonderful to have you back there with me. I've already got ideas on what to decorate the truck with, so please, I knew please. You would. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm with you, Hector. I'm hood. and anybody else from the council who'd like to join us, just to see absolutely Hector's costume is enough. <laughs> Navar, did you have a question? You had your hand up. Oh, for the trunk tree, if I'm off that day, I'll try and make it. And. Right now, um, my computer is about to die. Um, and I've got like artist, other stuff to do. Okay. Okay. I'll see you the next meeting, though. Not okay. though. Nice to meet you guys. Right, you thank too. Bye, Navar. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Bye -bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. And Devar was part of our um, leadership group, our Project Three Thirty. He was with us for two years, and he um continue to be an active member with our, with our departments. So even though he has graduated, he still comes to our events to help out and volunteer his own time. So um, That's awesome. It's good to have That's him. Cool. I recruited him for our Youth Adult Council meeting. So I'm working on getting That's some cool. additional youth from our groups to be present in this meeting too, to get their voice in terms of what are some things they want to see for youth services? What are they noticing in school systems? So that way we can kind of fill that gap of information how to improve um, upon program. So for our next meeting, it is October 5th of this, of, for next month. So I just wanted to state that I will not be in attendance for the next meeting. And I'm not, I'm thinking that Mr. Crocker will not be in attendance next month either. His son will be getting married and we will be going to Turks and Caicos for the wedding. Oh, congratulations. 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 That it's awesome. awesome. Thank you, guys. Is that when it is, um, Shonda? The, um, that's the time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need you to put that in your calendar, Don. Okay. That needs Thank to you. go in your calendar. I hope, Don, I hope you were asking her about the next meeting. That's when it is. <laughs> wedding right exactly thank you <laughs> I, I want to clear it up for you Doc. Sheila's got him covered we don't have to worry he'll be there <laughs> she does how exciting nice anything else for new business Angelica or Tiffany I think that's pretty much it that we have for um that's all that I have for new business in terms of fall programs that we have coming through starting this month. Okay. So now is a good time for us to slide into announcements. Don, I was wondering if you wanted to share a little bit about the Dad Hero event. Yes. The um, yes. And that will be obviously this weekend from four to six. Um, and, and once again, I'm sorry. And that will also, my wife was in the background there, give me directors on that. So uh, also, um, and once again, this is our annual fatherhood event. Mm -hmm. It's called Dad Hero, and it's sponsored by My People Clinical Services, DCF, The Village, of course, um, the town of Bloomfield, uh, Favor, and New Opportunities. So we're looking forward to everyone to come out. We're looking to have a great time, hopefully, we're hoping to have, you know, between a thousand to fifteen hundred people if they come out like um, they had in the past. So we're looking forward to the movie. Starts at four o'clock. We're gonna have um, awards recognition for the fathers, entertainment, music, games, free food, uh, and movies on the lawn. And the movie on the lawn will start approximately about seven thirty. So please come out. No, thank you, Don. It's usually a great event that they all put on. Um, I can so. share the flyer, Angelica, if you um, give me. Okay. Let me share the flyer for all. Let's see. Share screen. My here we go. Let's move it down here. 
it's four to eight, right? It's going to be outdoors at 330 Park Avenue. Um, there will be lots of activities for kids. It's an all day activities on, on the stage. And we're also going to have a vaccine clinic there as well. And I can email that to everyone. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional um, announcements, folks? Roger, you're talking, but you're muted. I see your lips moving. How, how, how lucky for you. <laughs> um, I, I do have an additional question. Um, I'm interested in what social emotional learning and restorative practice instruction is being given to police officers, particularly those in schools. And if we don't have an answer now, maybe we could have an answer for the next meeting. Because... You're on the spot, Robert. <laughs> well, well, I didn't mean to put Robert on the spot because <laughs> it may not be his job. <laughs> um, so there, right now, like as for the last year or two, you know, we've been struggling staffing wise. I was just told today that I'm being pulled for the next couple months to go back into patrol. But we ha currently have no school resource officer, so there's like no classes or training scheduled or announced as yet okay because wow. yeah, they're supposed to have started as of july 1st yeah but yeah i, I that, hear you that, no one no one no, there's there are no school re there are no officers in schools, so it's not relevant in that sense but ho hopefully when hopefully we'll get back to a staffing situation right uh where if there are officers in school they can get they will get that sort of training because i think it's become uh there's been a lot of public concern raised about about issues around that and uh, people who are working in school with our kids need to have some of that information and background because I think it'll make them more effective and it's better for our kids. And also to, to add to that, Roger, I was thinking about too, this is, this is the first school year back from a lot of students from the pandemic. So figuring out how that social emotional is gonna look for those students this school year. I was even thinking about for Tiffany for JRP, if, this is going to mean an influx in JRB referrals, mm. behavioral issues, or other things that's happening with this with the youth in town due to just being back with in the school system and all the other issues that have, that we've been experiencing um, throughout the year as well. Because I, I I think it's pretty much commonplace that schools do not have the social workers or, or school psychologists that ideally they would have uh, so that, you know, that a lot of that sort of information of, of how to handle kids needs to be passed down to everybody who's interfacing with our, with our students. I think you're right. That's starting even here at the K through two school. It's real, prevalent. I see it in the hallways. The kids are falling out. They're screaming. They're crying. They don't know how to um, function being in school all day. It's, it's just, it's awful. And it's almost as if the training, the lack thereof of the training that we need as staff, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's what do we do and how do we do it? You know, we're caught between a rock and a hard place because we still need to be here and educate these kids. But there's so much going on with children these days that we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. Keisha Marino at the school um, district has additional profession, professional development around social emotional. I was waiting for you guys to get to me. <laughs> Um, we have a lot of things on the list because a lot of things, including this, have come up from our parents, our staff, about what we need to include in PD, and it's so much, and we're trying to include as much of it as we can. We've tried to address it case by case as, as it comes up, so we know um, some stu students, like, um, like, like what was just shared, like they don't know how to be in school anymore. This is their first time being in school, and they cry, and they show all these signs. We're trying to deal with those case by case and work with those parents as it comes up um but it's hard right now during this time period because we can't do anything face to face in the district so everything is still on zoom so we are not doing any in-person 
programs, workshops, or anything like that. So we have to kind of include as much as we can through Zoom. And, and our teachers have to teach all day. And then we're saying, hey, but come on to Zoom afterwards so that we can just talk about some of these things. And we're trying really hard. So I can hopefully update you guys next time about what, what, what will be included in our upcoming PDs. Thank Thank you. Kishima, is CHR still involved in any way with providing um, emotional support to families and students? I want to say yes, but let me not jump the gun and let me find out and I can get back to you. Yeah, I think actually it's not just PD officers who are supposed to have that training. There are others involved mm -hmm. as well. I'm just not sure exactly where that breakdown is. Yeah, just a quick comment, not for anything, right, Ms. Jones, we, we, this should be a multi-year kind of approach. Um, I think we need to be very aware of that, right? And I think this council over the past probably year, two years, has really kind of been screaming about mental health, right? Because everything was heading that way, then COVID happened, and it just brought everything to the forefront. So not for anything, right? Just a quick comment that I get it. I have a child who... Uh, is in the school system as well. We see it. We see it out in the community. We need to be very, you know, cognizant that this is not a quick fix. Um, and I'm sure anybody at the council will be willing to to assist within uh, social news services. We need to use every resource that we have available to us uh, and not get, uh, you know, kind of caught up in the minutia or the bureaucracy of, hey, you know, maybe we don't want to reach out to whatever. But that, that's just my comment. Nope. I, I mean, I agree. I know that Wendy at the district has been has been with her team trying to make sure that they have all the training that they need. And her team is uh, com it's combined of our support staff, our social workers, our IBS staff. Our, so all of the support staff, they get training on certain things immediately that our teachers don't necessarily get right away because we feel as though they need it first because that's where our students go and our families go first when, when they need support. Um, but like I said, we're, we're trying to work really, really hard. I just think that COVID put everybody who was providing the training for us before, they put some of their things on hold because they lost staff as well. So trying to get staff to everyone because everyone needs everything right now has been really, really hard. So I will look into it and ask the questions that I need to ask and hopefully I'll be able to update you guys next time. Okay, I, I just to add one thing. I, I think the requirement is that they also be integrated uh, social, emotional, and restorative practices into professional development in the schools as a whole, mm -hmm. not just restricted to uh, PD. You're right. Any other comments? I'm, I'm sorry. One more quick question, Angelica. How many, um, how many back graduation bags did we give out? Oh yeah, it was a. We gave out. Go back to Hundred and thirty bags. Thank you. You're welcome. And it worked out perfectly because when we had that day, we had um, they were all meeting for breakfast, so we were able to we join them for their breakfast that they had, and we were able to get them all their bags. So we got a lot of the students, and we left a few bags for um, some students that weren't in attendance for for the breakfast as well. Great. If if I can, I think this will be Angelica. And I think I know will be Angelica's last meeting um, with us um, before the little one joins her family um, in a few weeks. But who's counting Angelica, right? <laughs> I know. Um, so we want to wish you well. Um, we are excited for you and your, your new addition. Um, and we'll see you when you get back. And we yeah. want pictures. Yeah. yeah. I will make sure I send plenty of pictures and you know Camilla knows I have a list of things for everybody to do for the next meeting <laughs> even though I'm not here in October I have a list of what's happening <laughs> perfect we're excited okay. for you thank you yes yes
Any other announcements? Mr. Hawthorne, would you like to say anything as we're getting ready? I think we're nearing the end of our agenda. Only thank you for inviting me and I have um, I have thoroughly enjoyed this orientation and look to participate as often as I can. We're very happy to have you here today. Thank you. Great. All right, and do we, if there's nothing else, do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.05 p.m. All right, all in agreement, Beth. Anybody in agreement? Or who wants to stay on? No, I don't. <laughs> all right, everybody, it was great to see you all. We'll see you at our next meeting. Angelica, we wish you a happy, easy labor. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs>